This is a great patch, but where do I stick this? Hey! Hey, Scouter Stan. I tell you what, we have fun in scouting. We do a lot of fun things. One of the neat things we do is patch collecting. Now, patch collecting can be crazy, okay? It can be... Yeah, I'll put a video. It's going to be up there. Go to it later. You know the drill. I'll tell you what, patch collecting is a lot of fun. There are two different camps when you're dealing with patches. Now, patches can be very, they can vary in different things, uh, but typically things you would put on a uniform, an award, a merit badge, those kinds of things, they're different than the things you would get for your camp blanket or a vest, okay? So there's a big difference between those two things. If you get something that's that really is cool, but it has no place on the uniform, then it shouldn't go on the uniform. Now with that in mind, there is a place for temporary patches. If you get a temporary patch, Say, for instance, you got something like this. You can hang this or even sew it to your pocket on this side of the uniform. In fact, check out the video up there uh, if you're confused about where patches go. Okay, That is your temporary spot, and it's on every uniform. Okay, It's this pocket. That's one of the things to keep in mind. Another big place of choice for a lot of awards Say, for instance, you have a Novo Award, or you have these awards that are presented to you. If there's no place on the uniform, a really unique place is the back of the sash. Now, a lot of scouts go, well, you know, it's like I'm hiding it or something. No. In fact, when you go up in front of the audience, that's the part they see is all these really cool, exotic awards you have on the back of your sash. That's t I don't think that, that is actually explained when they gave you the sash. The sash on the back, that could be for merit badges. And if you try to get them all, you're going to need a bigger sash. So, you know, there's a lot of merit badges. But that keeping that in mind, you can put all those awards. You know, like you get the Paul Bunyan Award, which is a cool axe. Uh, you could get a totem ship and fireman shit and all that stuff. You could put that on the sash, and a lot of scouts do. Now, I want to also talk a little bit about patches on the sash, the OA sash. This is my OA sash, and you will notice that on this sash, it quite literally is blank on the back, okay? There's no patches meant to be put on this. Now, the only exception is the anniversary patch. That's the only patch they let you put on the front, okay? That's it. There's no back patch. There's nothing you can do about that, okay? They are, uh, they're not absolutely strict about it, but they want you to, to keep that honored, okay, uh, as a white strip. There's, there's, when you're in the OA, you know what I mean. But that's typically what they do with the sash. Now, there's nothing saying you can't put patches on the inside. Now, that's what I've done. I put it so that when I'm wearing the sash, I, I literally, here we go, I'm wearing the sash like this, okay? And then if I need to look up something, I can just flip it over and look up my original lodge, Makajuan up in Wisconsin. And then my two Tipisaw ones here, and I wrote little notes and dates and stuff on it. That's something you could do on the inside. But when you flip it back, the normal side, you don't know it's even there. So that's something you could do. And I even put the legend on the back so that it's closer to my heart. Okay? It makes it more meaningful. But on the outside, you wouldn't know. You would not even know. So, But that's something to, to keep in mind. You can put patches in hidden places. Now there are scout leaders out there that have these red jackets. I don't recommend sewing a bunch of uh, patches to a felt jacket, okay? Felt is, uh, it's very warm, but it's expensive, okay? So 
the cheaper vinyl ones that are out there, uh, they don't hold up. If you're near a fire, like like at, at night, you got a fire going, uh, one of those little sparks can come over and put a hole in it. So one of the things that a lot of scout leaders do is they will put on other patches, you know, camperies, different uh, events they've been at, uh, even non-scouting patches. Now another great place uh, for patches is the military patches. If you've been in the military, if you're retired military or have family that are retired military, they will have a patch or different commemorative things that would be beautiful on uh, different scouting things. Now, this you have to keep in mind. You yourself have to have earned them. You, if you're going to wear them, you have to earn them. You, if, for instance, if it's a purple heart patch, you didn't receive it, you shouldn't be wearing it, okay? you got to keep those things consistent. Now, if you put that patch within a, a, a woven picture of the person who received it as an honorarium, that's a different story. And that would be beautiful to be put on a blanket. These are things you can do. A lot of times the campfire blankets are very popular and they will do things like they've even I've, I've seen blankets that they will have that they will literally cut a slot in it and then put edging on that edge of the where they cut the material and they will put a ton of patches all over it and it's very warm because <laughs> patches are very insulated. They usually have a plastic liner on the inside. Uh, that is is a wonderful thing. They'll actually, like a poncho, they'll have a poncho, a blanket that they can have for uh, a campfire. So if you have military patches that are honoring somebody, make sure it's real clear, okay? Don't just put the a purple heart thing on there and have to explain because you're going to be spending a lot of time with military people talking about that, okay? So you want, unless you've earned it, that's, that's different, okay? And it's something that we should recognize and be proud of. Another patch that's very popular, and especially in the scouting world, um, patches of Baden-Powell. Uh, this is a, one that's going out for winning. So uh, those are very popular. They don't have any words on them. And they're antique, actually. That one's a vintage patch from the 50s. Okay, so it's been around. And what's, what's interesting is you can put those on your jacket, on your blanket. These are things you can do. And it really starts a conversation. You know, when you see that on somebody's blanket, they go, ooh, that's really cool. There are different patches you can put on different blankets. You can't wear them on the uniform, like we talked about earlier, but you can put them on the blanket. If you had something like this beautiful um, Queen's Jubilee patch, okay, that that's gorgeous okay that's something you could put on there a very good friend of mine sent this to me and uh you know there's different kinds there's like this this fourth of july one it's a trademark kind of patch it really isn't scout related and even this one it's all uh this one's a biscuit challenge uh for those in the united states uh, a biscuit is a cookie okay what we call a cookie the brits the British people, they refer to them as biscuits. Now, what we call biscuits, they ain't a cookie. Believe me, you did something wrong if it's like a cookie. Anyways, these are patches you can put on a blanket if it's international patches. Try to avoid patches that are awards. Brit, you know, like a British Awards or something like that, but something that's commemorative or a camp out or Brownsea Island or something like that, that's not totally fine. But if it's an award or some kind of official thing, you want to kind of respect that, okay? If it's, it is something to consider. Um, sometimes the um, Brit, British uh, scouts like to collect different things and they don't collect individual patches they will actually go after collecting entire shirts so that's possible uh, we know that from a lot of the reports coming back to the US contingent at World Jamborees they want full shirts they don't want to 
patch. They want the whole thing. So that's something you got to think about if you're into patches and uh, where they go, what is appropriate, what is not. Another big thing to consider, now this is just, uh, we want to make sure that we live up to being trustworthy. You want to make sure that if you're using a logoed or a trademark patch, say it's your favorite baseball team or it's your favorite football team or, or what have you, you want to have that on your, your camp blanket, but make sure that it's licensed, okay? You don't want to bring your trustworthiness into question over a patch, okay? Make sure that it is licensed, okay? That they're paying the royalties to use that image. Very important, okay? You want to make sure that your patches are legitimate to make sure that they're not counterfeit, okay? There are counterfeit patches out there, and there are people who collect them. That's a whole nother show. So there's a lot of different kinds of patches out there. Have fun with it. Uh, you, I've seen patches where they do the different shapes and designs and then do different borders. And it is absolutely amazing. So collecting patches and using them to, to create a wonderful campfire blanket that will cause conversations and laughter and fun that's the beauty of the patches so keep up that work um, integrate those things in try to avoid using any trademark or military stuff on the uniform now I often get this question about my patrol patch this patrol patch on the side that I have here is not a military patch it was too bright to be a military patch. It needs to be darker. <laughs> so, it's too bright. But the person who got it authorized by our council was with the military and they were left with these because they were too bright. They couldn't use them on the military uniform. So that being the case, they said, here are these patches, throw them away, do what you want with them. We said, well, we'll use them as our patrol patch. And they were authorized because they were never military. They were never for military use. That's important. That is important. Um, this, uh, the Griffins have since disbanded. Uh, and hopefully next season, I'll have a new shirt. So look forward to that. But that th being the case, keep your patches as clean as possible and in the proper place. Uh, check out the videos later on and I'll tell you what, scouting is a lot of fun. We do fun things and patches can make you can do a lot of fun things. So keep that in mind. And with that, I'm going to go right into our Scout Masters or Scouters joke of the week. I ordered a chicken and an egg online. I'll let you know which one came first. <laughs> That's a good one. So, which one came first? Woo! -hoo. Anyhow, there's a lot of little... That's more of a riddle, actually. Think about it. Um, but there's a lot of fun things out there. Um, I've even seen chicken patches, okay? <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> Anyways... Keep the comments coming in. Make sure that they're by the Scout Oath and Scout Law. Um, that's the wonderful thing. We are in a wonderful organization. Please keep the fun going in scouting. Scouting is meant to be fun. And tell those jokes and, and do fun things. Okay? Get out. Do things. Okay? That's very important. Uh, the patches are a great way to show appreciation. Uh, they're a great way to show and stimulate the conversation about different things that goes on in scouting. Always keep up the good work. We're doing good work. We are doing this for the America's youth. And they appreciate it. I appreciate you. And I want you to know that. I really do. Until next time, I'll see you on the trail.